There's a pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, BookTube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. I'm here with an incredibly special guest. He was one of my first subscribers, I think. We're going to delve into that, but I think that... Yere has been commenting on my channel since I've had my channel, and now he's a uh, fairly new booktuber and has a wonderful channel all of his own, <laughs> and his channel is Drawn to Stories. So I am bringing him on because I have a thousand things I want to talk to him about, and I also want more of you to realize uh, what a great guy he is so that you'll go and subscribe to Drawn to Stories. Whew. Yere, <laughs> welcome to my channel. Oh, Sean. Thank you. Very glad to be here. It's great yeah. to be here. So enough about you. What about me? No, <laughs> you've been an, a long-term subscriber of mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have. Can't remember if I was there. No, you know, no I'm first, the very first beginning video, but yeah, first few months, yeah. I think. And you've always yeah. left good, great comments. Mm -hmm. and you and I have yeah. had good exchange, you know, DMs on other software and stuff. So it's I'm yeah. so delighted that you have come to BookTube with your own channel. So how long yeah. have you had your channel now? It must be about four or five months. January. So it's yeah, about four months now. Yeah. And I must say that you were one of the biggest inspirations to start my channel because you were the first people to nudge me in that direction. It took oh. took a quite long while to get actually here, but yeah, here I am now. Well, I'm glad that you finally made the leap and you have a great channel and you deserve many more subscribers than you have. Yeah. So I like to start these Zoom chats. I just kind of got into it. It was a, just a, an idea that came to me once and it, I like to do it every time now. Let's do a quick show and tell. The, the most recent book that we've bought or borrowed from the library or stolen that we brought into the house. Would you like to go first? Sure. That's actually a nonfiction book, Landscape and Memory by Simon Sharma mix of history and art and sort of exploring how landscape has been used in art and culture and how culture shapes are how we view at landscapes. So very interesting stuff, in my opinion. Great. Yeah. Have you read others by Simon Shama? No, absolutely nothing. But I believe he's um, written history too, popular history. Yeah, lots of history. Yeah. I think Embarrassment of Richie is something about the Dutch uh, golden age or something and some history books about the jews i think quite a lot of history and maybe one about the irish is that right or have i got that I got my wires crossed <laughs> could be i'm not entirely familiar with him and so you're into art yeah very much into art and history of course mm. well mine is it's not really from your neck of the woods unless you count it as a nordic <laughs> country but it is a uh -huh. icelandic novel that my novelist friend Ronan mm -hmm. Hessian tweeted about and I immediately ordered it and it just came the other day. The author is, and you can correct my pronunciation, <laughs> John Kalman Stephenson and the English title is Summer Light, comma, and then comes the night. Do you know this writer? Well, the, the name seems familiar. I think he wrote one book before I've seen, but I might be <laughs> entirely wrong. I can't remember what Ronan said. So whatever it was, it intrigued me. And it's translated from the Icelandic by Philip Routen. And this translation was came out just this year. I'm not a big reader of what's on the back, but if I, I keep my eyes half open just to get a little bit of a phrase here. It's set in a small Icelandic town in the summer. That's all I need to know, but uh, I want to give it a try. I did about four and a half minutes of preparation for this chat today. And I found out that some people think that Icelandic and Finnish, the languages sound the similar. Is that right? Um, no, I, I wouldn't say so. Icelandic is more similar to you no know, Norwegian and Swedish, and they don't have anything in common with Finnish. So Finnish, Finnish is a you no. Know, a beast of its own. <laughs> yeah, I, I found that. And this was anecdotal kind of uh, comments that no, we realize that they're linguistically very different, but they do sound alike. I read it on the internet. Yeah, it must be true. <laughs> yeah, of course. It must be. So your first language, obviously, is Finnish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And That's how fine. much of your reading is in Finnish? Well, I try to keep it somewhere around 40, 50%. So I don't get entirely out of touch with my Finnish, but I do read quite a lot of books in English. I know that to be true. And I didn't know until about six minutes ago that 
there is another national language in Finland, Swedish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Do you speak Swedish? Yeah, to some extent. It's not nearly as fluent with Swedish as I am with Finnish or English, but I can understand and read read something in Swedish. And I didn't know that Swedish Sweden was kind of a colonial power, like kind of... Oh, yes. Yeah. Since like 13th, around 13th century, part of the Northern Crusades when they came here to Finland and tried to spread Christianity and stuff like that. So Finland became gradually ruled by the Swedish people. Until so, about the um, early 19th century, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Then there was this war between Sweden and was it the Russian Empire at that time. And then Sweden lost and we became annexed I think, by the Russian Empire. We somehow right. kept our sort of independence or you know, autonomy so we could still govern our stuff. I don't know a whole lot about Finnish history, culture and literature, and I'm expecting you to bring me up to speed over the course <laughs> of this conversation. So I think we've talked about this in my comment section. I have one Finnish novel on my shelf that's a World War II novel. Mm. I'm, gonna, I'm not even going to try to pronounce the author. I'll let you do that, but it's called Unknown Soldiers in English. H how do you pronounce the author's name? Yeah. Baino Lin. Oh, so Baino Lin. Yeah. Baino Lin. And, and this Lina there means castle. Okay. Castle. And translated by a very improbably named translator, <laughs> Liesel Yamaguchi. So it's the Yamaguchi that throws me off, but that's fascinating. Uh -huh. I want to know more about her. So have you read this? Do you recommend this? I think you told me that you weren't a big fan or you didn't think I'd like it, something like that. If I remember right, that was one of the books that we were assigned to read in school. So at the time, I didn't have much interest in that because... I'm not a fan of war novels in general, right. so it didn't captivate me at the time. But it is, you know, a very well loved classic and very humorous, but also very bleak, and doesn't romanticize the war. Mm. I'm pretty sure if I read it now, I would enjoy it a lot more than when I did. When it's an assigned text, it's not usually a peace reading <laughs> experience. Yeah. So do you have any Finnish novels or writers that you would recommend? Oh, that's always a bit tricky business. Obviously, well, I have some props here. <laughs> you may have seen this I have. Historic, historical novel on my channel. I talk about it quite a lot. Mika Wataris Sinuhe Egyptilainen, The Egyptian. That's quite a mammoth of a book, but it's very detailed and well-written historical novel. You're enjoying it? Yeah, I enjoy it. Mika Waltari has written also quite a lot of other historical novels and some detective novels as well, but I don't think they have been translated into English. So is this a contemporary writer that's still working today or? Oh, he died quite a long ago. So, And then there are some other authors I could recommend. For example, uh, I think you may have heard of this, um, Sophie Oksanen. I have. Odysseus uh, Purge in English. I uh -huh. knew this was quite popular at some point. I saw it pop up in quite a lot of booktube channels at one point. I love the cover. Can you hold it up again? It's quite oh, yeah. striking. Mm -hmm. Because she's an elderly woman, or there's some gray in her hair, and it's just a very kind of glamorous shot. Pretty much black and white, except for the earring, if I'm seeing it correctly. It's, maybe not, but it's, yeah, it's quite striking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. And this novel is quite a lot about, you know, Estonian history and all kinds of struggles that the women had to go through a lot of sex trafficking and abuse and yeah it's a very tough read oxanen is an estonian writer i think one or one or two of her parents are estonian but she is a finnish writer oh okay yeah and you read non-fiction and fiction uh, would you say it's about 50 50 split or i wish i could say that but <laughs> no i read mostly fiction and every now and then something non-fiction to sort of cleanse my palate or you know, keep me interested. You know, I like to diversify my reading. Let's broaden the conversation. Who are some of your mm -hmm. favorite writers, favorite books? Uh, well, I love Virginia Woolf. Yes. I really love her. And Kazuo Ishiguro. You may have heard me uh, rave about him in your comment section. Whenever I was dissing him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I remember I re recommended uh, The Buried Giant or something to you at yeah, of course, back in the day, I didn't know you hated, you know, fantasy and stuff like that. So I will probably end up. Have you read the newest one? 
No, I haven't read it yet. No, I was a bit, a bit hesitant to pick it up because I've heard it's a lot of compared to uh, Never Let Me Go. And in my opinion, Never Let Me Go is one of his weakest novels. So not so excited. I have such a complicated relationship to his fiction, what I've read, because I liked Never Let Me Go when I read it. And then mm -hmm. it just aged horribly. And I downvoted my original rating on Goodreads yeah. but because it just, I just think, no, it's just bugging me. I don't, didn't like it. I didn't like it. I liked it less and less. It's one of those books that really just went downhill mm -hmm. after I put it down. And I couldn't finish The Buried Giant. And now the one short story I did that was in the Faber series, mm -hmm. yeah. you remember what that was? It's from oh, his one short story collection. Yeah, he has written one short story collection, uh, Nocturnes or something. So it was probably taken from that. I can't yeah, remember the individual. I can't remember that, but I'll put a link in the show notes. But I loved, that's the thing I loved the most of yeah. him, was that story. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure you would like his Remains of the Day. Excellent I'm sure novel. I would too. It's the one that I don't have on my shelf and I haven't gotten to yet. But everybody says you must read Remains of the Day. I will probably have to read the, what's the new one called? The robot uh, or something? Clara, Clara and the Sun. Clara and the Sun, yeah. um, because I'm doing this Booker challenge, right? So I'll, it's probably going to be on the Booker know. list. So I don't really care about Booker. <laughs> well, I don't either, but I got roped into it because I made this audacious right thing when if Shaggy oh yeah when that Shuggy Bane yeah, one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I yeah. remember that. So, so I'm I'm locked in, and I'm looking forward to it actually. But no, I'm not a big prize list person. Mm -hmm. So favorite Virginia Woolf book. It's a tough one as well. I have to pick a favorite. In terms of enjoyment, I would have to say Orlando. Okay, haven't read that one. Yeah, excellent sort of historical novel, uh, ranging from um, 17th century to uh, her time of, period. So a lot of quite gender a lot of span bending there. and yeah, genre bend, not genre, gender well, bending. Maybe and, maybe uh, genre bending and gender bending. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everything like that. Yes. So that's and, a very enjoyable read, and there's lots to take from it. So. Lots of uh, references to other novelists and ideas and philosophical mo movements. And yeah, it's all over the place, but it's so fun to read. And it was and, written as a love letter to Vita Sackville West. That's one mm -hmm. I always remembered about it. And also, did you see the movie? I have to say, I haven't seen the movie. I haven't either, but Quentin Crisp plays the Queen Elizabeth. If there's a Queen Elizabeth I as a character, right? Yeah, um, the very British. briefly in the beginning of the novel. Okay, yeah. so maybe then it must just be a quick thing, but Quentin Crisp um, played her. So but, it's um, on my shelf. I've heard really yeah. good things about it. Then I, I would say I like uh, To the Lighthouse almost, you know, almost equally. It's oh, yeah. you know, a masterpiece of a novel. The structure oh. is just perfect. And yeah. I loved it so much. That's one of the ones that I did as an audiobook text combo where I was mm -hmm. reading it page by page, but also listening to it. And the audiobook narrated by Juliet Stevenson is to die for. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to just listen. I read every page of it while listening, and it was a sublime, it was a peak experience yeah. of an audiobook. Yeah. yeah. So beautifully written. Yeah. yeah. Now, Mrs. Dalloway hasn't come up yet. What's wrong with Mrs. Dalloway? Hey. <laughs> well, in my books, it's you know a bit mediocre. Okay, um, interesting. Yeah, it has some excellent, beautiful moments, but it doesn't grab me in the way that the other books do. So, and I would say Mrs. Dalloway and To the Lighthouse tie of the ones I've read. Mm -hmm. I loved The Waves when I read it thirty years ago, and then I tried to mm -hmm. read it again, and um, I couldn't get into it, and so I put it up down. But I will try it again. I think I need to have my head very completely clear. Mm -hmm. get into the waves and yeah. then there's quite a few that i haven't read night and day and i've read the uh, voyage the, out the, the years the years i haven't yeah. read now the best short story i read last year was the mark on the wall do you know that short story of virginia Woolf's? Uh, i have to say i don't know it's to die for do you know the booktube channel codex cantina mm -hmm. yeah i know I they said, did, uh, yeah, yeah they did that story and so i uh -huh found a copy I could read and I read it and I loved it maybe 15 times more than they did and I loved it so much it's one of the best short stories I've ever read so mm -hmm. it's a nice idea that I still have so much more Virginia Woolf to explore something to look forward to 
have you read any of the novels that are kind of intertextually, including Virginia Woolf and her writing, for example, the Michael Cunningham novel, The Hours? Oh, I haven't read that, but I have seen the movie. And I really like that one. It's really good. Mm -hmm. the, the novel is too, but it's, yeah, it's, I think it's his best novel. How about more any contemporary writers writing today that you like? Well, Ish besides Ishiguro. Yeah, there are some. For example, uh, I guess it's weird fiction writer, uh, China Mieville. Mm -hmm. I like his. He's very imaginative and That's very cool. solid writer. And his books are a bit hit and miss, but whenever I read his book, I'm very captivated and thrilled. Right? You never know what's, what he comes up with. Yeah, very I imaginative. Don't, I don't think he will be a Sean writer. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> but i've heard lots about him so what have you loved the most of his probably perdido street station okay i've heard the yeah. name. very intense read and then uh, the city and the city it has sort of this idea that there are two cities sort of i guess on top of each other or very close to each other but they can sort of mix with it, each other or see see each other so it's very how should i put it kind of sci-fi e or something uh -huh, yeah, how to build bridges between two worlds on some level. It also kind of reminds me of the the vague kind of sci-fi. I'm not sure if it's sci-fi, but there's a vague uh, sense of not really knowing where you are in some mm -hmm. in a lot of Ishiguro's fiction. So mm -hmm. yeah, I have to recommend this one again. I mm -hmm. talked about this on my channel a while ago. Sharks in the Time of Saviors by Kawaii Strong Washburn. And this is his debut novel. I thought it, this was just excellent. You know, nice mixture of you know, Hawaiian heritage and culture, and then family dynamics. And very so it's a, a Hawaiian writer? Yeah, Hawaiian writer. That first name is very Japanese, Kawaii. Yeah, Kawaii, yeah. Is he Japanese-American? Japanese-Hawaiian? Um, I, don't, I don't think so. That's a very interesting name. Um, born and raised on Hawaii. I'm really looking forward to what he comes up with next. It's set in Hawaii. Partially in Hawaii and then in the sort of other parts of the United States. But uh, yeah, the main focus is on the Hawaii. And now he lives in Minneapolis, according to his webpage. And that came out maybe last year? Yeah. Yeah, last year. Would it be a Sean book? Uh, I would say so. Okay, well then I will try it. Yeah. There's very tiny magical realist bits that you might find off-putting, but um, I don't think that would become an obstacle for you. I will take that under advisement. <laughs> well, you you will know who to blame then. <laughs> if it's not a short book. Yeah. <laughs> Now, uh, one of the things that we have talked about offline over the years is you have quite an interest in Japan, Japanese culture, Japanese literature. So let's mm -hmm. get into some of that. Why do you have this interest? Uh, I guess when I was around 14 or 15, there was this huge manga boom here in Finland. Lots of manga got translated, uh, for example, One Piece and Dragon Ball, stuff like that. So that got me interested. Like, what's this all about? And I was very hooked, wanted to learn more. Then I saw Akira Kurosawa's movies and heard the language and, oh yeah, that's something that I want to learn. And before Sorry. I got into university, I had sort of a year year off and studied Japanese in the Eastern Finland. And yeah, really into Japanese culture. So who are some of the writers or novels or whatever that you have enjoyed? I think um, you have recently, somewhat recently read the Makioka Sisters, right? Oh, yeah. I read it last year. Yes. And That's my favorite Japanese novel. Yeah, probably one of the best I've read. I loved it so much. Mm -hmm. That's the oh, well, well, there's one more Junichiro Tanizaki book that I've read. The Key. <laughs> remember, remember your reaction. Yeah, I hated it so much. <laughs> I think I should probably reread that because I had such a profound hate for that book. I think I had so, such expectations after the Makayoka sisters and that it was such a different book. Maybe mm -hmm. I wasn't being fair to it. Like maybe I, I, had to, I had a temper tantrum almost about it. 
my, my review was basically a temper tantrum. I'll put a link in the show notes if you want to see that, <laughs> folks. But yeah, I think I agree with you. Your uh, opinion was quite correct. You agreed with I my opinion think... at the time? <laughs> yeah. 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 It's not a very good novel. I just thought it was so perverse in such an uninteresting way on such a kind of mm -hmm. superficial level and the characters didn't have any depth to them and I mean the map of the sisters was a book that I fell into and I think I read it over about four or five months and I didn't want to come back out after I'd finished it it was just so rich <laughs> Tanizaki wrote a, a kind of sequel to the map sisters oh but I'm it's not, not it. yeah it's not quite a sequel it's called the maids it's his last novel has a different translator, Michael Cronin. That makes me nervous because Edward Seidensticker translated the Macchiopa Sisters and just was a fabulous translation. It's described as a kind of sequel. Well, I haven't heard of The Maids. Yeah, it's focused on the, the servants. Yeah, so, right yeah. now I'm thinking that maybe because it's not talked about that much, then maybe it's not a good novel. It's all, that it's is sometimes I'm true. But I'm also a firm believer that there are hidden gems out there. And part of my uh, mission on BookTube is to bring those, those uh, books that nobody else is talking about to light and champion them on my little dusty corner of BookTube. Yeah. And then some other Japanese authors that I like are Eiji Yoshikawa, who wrote Musashi as a historical novel as well. And I love that novel. I've heard of it, haven't read it. I don't know if it's, you know, a Sean book, but it's an excellent sort of character study, I think. Well, I like character and studies. Then uh, Yasunori Kawabata. I wouldn't say I love him, but I appreciate his writing a his lot. His famous one is... Snow Country. Yeah, and I didn't get along with that one. I guess I didn't enjoy it that much either. Snow Country is his most famous one. I also had uh, Ronan Hessian recommended The Master of Go to me. Mm -hmm. And that's a, that's also a very very interesting one because oh you've read it okay great yeah I've read it yeah very interesting one and because there are some sort of pictures or tables of the go board so you can see how the movements are there played and if I remember right there was some kind of master apprentice character dynamic as well going on there I read it as an artifact <laughs> of a, you know lost tradition or something like that like don't hear about go that much these days at least not in this part of the world so it was very fascinating to read about that it's still played in japan but now that you mention it it's my elderly japanese students that talk about go it's not my young younger mm -hmm. students or my, yeah my younger husband that talks about go so now ronan said you don't have to know anything about go to enjoy the novel because he said i yeah. don't i don't know anything about it it was uh, quite immersive without that yeah but, i totally agree with that so i will give that one a try four or so months into booktube how's it going it's going really well i had a bit of a shaky start because i didn't know which direction i want to take my channel and how to deal with all the technical stuff and how to manage my comment section but it's all going rather well now of course i'm uh, struggling to post a video regularly because you know all the other stuff in life going on at the moment like my studies and stuck with my mammoth book so don't want to flood my channel with post about that one book every single week so yes i came up against something like that when i tried to limit my reading to only six books for the mm -hmm. first few months this year and then it was like you know that the, if there are a bunch of six chunky books i didn't have new stuff to talk about on my friday reads and yeah and mm -hmm. i just do better reading more books at the same time i, I just do like i'm reading twice as many books now that i have taken that rule off because I'm reading, I'm not going to give the, the number out of how many books I'm currently reading, but it's much higher than six, and I am having a much better time of it. How about things like readathons, buddy reads, read-alongs? Have you been participating in some of those? Or, well, I'm participating on the March of the Mammoths. Mammoths. At the moment, yeah, although we are past March already, but I'm still reading that my mammoth book, Robert Musil's uh, The Man Without Qualities ambitious and, but but no not participating in any other reader turns and i'm still a bit hesitant about body reads as well because i uh, don't know how i'm able to keep up with that at least at the moment but more open to the idea perhaps later this year sure. 
And I, th I think there's different ways to think about a buddy read. So mm -hmm. I sometimes feel overwhelmed with it's so much of a good thing that it becomes a little bit stressful, but I, I love buddy reads. And the buddy reads that I do are usually pretty intense. Like you check in at least once a week and you have a set schedule. And sometimes people need some leeway or things get behind and that's totally fine. But there's other ways where it's a little bit l more loosey goosey the relax mm -hmm. like let's both read it and let's just talk about it together when we finished so that kind of a thing is maybe yeah maybe that's good work yes or, or reading shorter stuff mm -hmm. sure. let's just read a short story and talk about that or a novella mm -hmm. or something but yeah so in the future i might come and pester you bother you and say let's buddy read tanazaki's the maids someday yeah, perhaps. That sounds like a great idea. And we could do it that way. We could just say, let's both read it in the month of July and talk about it in early August. Because mm -hmm. uh, I have a buddy read of a Russian novel, Quiet Flows the Dawn by Sholokov. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a massive book. It is. And Lukash of Cruel Reader's Thesis, that mm -hmm. finally got his new channel name in my head. Uh, <laughs> we have been thinking about toying with the idea of buddy reading it for a couple of years now and i finally said you know what it's just too long i can't commit to a buddy reading schedule for that long of a book it's just mm -hmm. too long so let's just say we're gonna have it read by september of 2022 and let's just talk about it let's have a zoom chat instead of a buddy read when we've both read it so there's lots of different ways to do it so are you a plan ahead reader or more spontaneous more spontaneous, I would say. I'm reading a book and then something in that book might sort of direct me to some other book. So I never know what I'm going to read next. So I won't ask you what you're going to read next. <laughs> yeah, because I have no idea. And are you a bailer? No, no, I'm not. I try to read everything that I start. So and that's, I, I thought I that's was a this, huge problem every now and then. <laughs> I thought I was this big influence in your reading life. What the hell? <laughs> and are you a monogamous reader or are you a book slut like me a bit of a book slut if yeah. we're using that term <laughs> we are we are using that term so, so yeah i usually have some kind of poetry collection as well that i'm reading and some uh, short story collection so i can sort of switch between Genres. like th three books at the same time but okay yeah so it's time to think about winding down the chat. Give me one or two favorite poets or poetry collections and one or two favorite short story writers and, or short story collections. Uh, Putting you on the spot. Oh, yeah. Or if it's easier, the last book of poetry or short stories that you read that you would recommend. It might be an easier oh, yeah. about it. Yeah, that's a good one. The last collection of poetry that I read was... Uh, Ganti by Giacomo Leopardi, an Italian poet from the 19th century, translated by, I can't remember. <laughs> we'll look it up later, mm. yeah. Very evocative and I don't know how to describe it. Lots of idyllic imagery and struggling with perhaps depression because the poet was, was quite a miserable person. So there's quite a lot of that, but it's very beautifully written and very beautifully translated as well. Lovely. I will check that out. I did a brief reading of one poem on my earlier videos. Uh, oh, I missed that. So we'll put a link to that in the show notes. I'll get that from you later. Great. All right. Well, it's, it's not a very good reading. I don't think me butchering Italian there. So. Oh, you read it in Italian? Oh, yeah. I did. What languages do you read, by the way? Mostly just Finnish and English. But every now and then I try to include some something else like Swedish, Italian, French. Yeah. So you read those languages. Mm -hmm. Wow, fabulous. And short stories. Short stories. I would have to recommend George Saunders. I really love his short stories. He's a very economic writer. Mm -hmm. Like He doesn't waste words. And that's one that we disagree on. I've never gotten along with George Saunders. What was the... Mm -hmm. It came out about seven or eight years ago, his short story collection. What was it called? 10th of Dece December. Oh, I bailed on that twice. I just couldn't get into it. So he's not a writer for me. I had better luck in a way with Lincoln and the Bardo. Did you like that? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I love that book. But once it got 
waylaid and all those ghosts, uh, it lost me. But the story about Lincoln mm-hmm. and his son, I found really shattering, beautifully written. Oh, yeah, it was very touching. It was so touching. And then I thought it kind of it got diluted with all these fucking ghosts. Excuse my <laughs> language. But yeah, Ray, this has been an absolute delight. I hope you'll come back. Oh, yeah, I'd love to. It's been an absolute pleasure to be here. Great. Great. Well, we'll, Great host. Do it ag- we'll do it again and happy reading. Thank you.